Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a different setup with a single mass and two springs. Both springs are attached to the same side, and in this case we have it vertical. Now, what we first do is we attach the mass to the springs. We allow everything to settle down so that the mass will drop down until the force upward is equal to the force of gravity downward, which in essence negates the force of gravity, and so there's no potential energy due to the change in height. However, there is change in potential energy due to the change in the length of the springs. Now, once it's in equilibrium, we're going to take the mass, we're going to pull it down a certain distance. Let's say minus x equals the maximum amplitude minus a. Then we'll let go, and the object will oscillate up and down. Even though the two spring constants are not the same, k1 and k2, and just for sake of argument, let's say that k2 is larger than k1, the second spring will pull with a greater force than the first spring, and when they're compressed, the second spring will push back with a greater force than the first spring. But if the springs are close enough together, and the mass is large enough in comparison to the distance between the springs, in essence, they will act as if they're a single spring. And so what happens then is we have this situation where the total energy, which is equal to the initial energy that we put into the system when x is equal to a, then we can say that this is equal to the total potential energy in the spring, which is one-half k1a squared plus one-half k2a squared. That will be the total energy stored in the two springs. And we can factor out one-half a squared, so this becomes k1 plus k2 times one-half a squared. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, well, the total energy that we put into the system is going to be equal to the sum of the kinetic and potential energy as it's oscillating back and forth. So we can say that the energy at any point in time is going to be equal to the initial energy, which is equal to, and let's write it as k1 plus k2 times one-half a squared, which will always equal to the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy of the system. So we can write that k1 plus k2 times one-half a squared is equal to the kinetic energy, which is one-half mv squared, plus the potential energy of the system, which is the energy stored in the two springs at any point in time, which is one-half k1x squared plus one-half k2x squared. Hmm, there's supposed to be a K here. Let me try to redo that. There we go. Okay, then uh, what we can do here is we can move one half mv squared to one side and everything else to the other side. So I'm going to flip the equation around, move this to the other side, and multiply everything by two so the one halves cancel out. There we go. And we can factor out a K1 plus K2 from this, or in other words, we can factor out an X squared. And we can then get mv squared is equal to k1 plus k2 times a squared minus x squared. Because when I move this to the other side equation, this becomes negative, so the x squares become negative. Then we can divide both sides by m and take the square root. So we can say that velocity as a function of x is equal to the square root of the sum of the two constants, k1 plus k2 over m, times a squared minus x squared. Notice when x goes to zero, that's when you have maximum velocity. When x is equal to a, that's when you have zero velocity. This is now becoming familiar territory. Notice this looks very similar as if we had one spring, but with two springs like this, we simply have to add the spring constants together. Next, we realize that this here, again, represents the natural frequency of oscillation, which means that in this example, omega sub naught, the natural angular frequency is going to be equal to the square root of the sum of the two spring constants divided by the mass. And if we want to find the acceleration as a function position, we can say that f equals ma, and in this case, of course, it will be the sum of the two masses, f1 plus f2 equals ma. When we add those two together, we get minus k1x minus k2 
K2x is equal to MA. We can factor out an x, write this as minus K1 plus K2 times x equals MA. And finally, A as a function of position x is equal to minus K1 plus K2 divided by the mass times x. And of course, realizing this, that this is the square of this, which means this can also be written that a as a function of x is equal to minus omega sub naught times x. So there's actually two ways in which we can write the acceleration as a function of position. And so that's how we handle it. If we have two springs like this in a vertical direction, side by side, you simply add the two spring constants and they act as a single spring. And that's how it's done.